early peek under our Christmas tree and we're putting on our ankle weights. Yay! I feel like that time when I was like in high school and I knew my mom had bought me wedged boots. So I went to the closet, took them, put tape on no, the bottom, did not. wore them to a party and then put them back. Are you serious? That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> Scam 101. <laughs> you put freaking tape under them? Yeah. Oh my god, that's like it's out genius. of the cartoon. It's genius. I, I like so we're gonna actually put these back open after. toys, play with them, and put them back. Well, same thing. True, true. So we all do it. We're gonna put it back. Shh. Don't tell Frederick. <laughs> okay, today's 101. Theme. All right, today's 101 is about. How it's done. How it's done. No, start again. Hey, scourge. How Hi. it's done. 101. <laughs> All right. Yes, we got it. All right, so today's 101 is the hinge. You're probably like, what's a hinge? Like my door hinge? Your body hinge. So it's this. It's a dating app now, I think, isn't it? It's a dating app. I don't do apps. No, we don't do apps. Because <laughs> we're married. Because we're married. <laughs> it's really bad to wah, do wah, apps wah. if we're married. <laughs> There's a whole other app for that. We won't go there. All right. There's a whole other app. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Focus. So I like to, if, you, if you're a mom or a dad and you've ever tried to like, get your child in a car seat and they're wah, flailing about and you do like the chop at the half body. Yeah, let's do it. It's Slow when your body chop. bends in half going down. This is a hinge. Sounds simple, but, and I didn't karate chop my children. FYI, I'm just saying, had I karate chopped them, that's where I would have done it to get them in the car seat. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a hinge. It's when you tip at the hip, to move your body downwards. So what's happening in here is her tailbone is going back. She's engaging her core. So she's bringing that belly button to spine. Her feet are shoulder width apart. Her shoulders are rolled back. She has a slight bend in the knees. Now, not doing this movement properly and loading it can, can be, like this. and can like, lead to injury faster than anything. Okay, so do not, the rule of thumb is do not add weight, do not load until you've properly done the hinge, mastered the hinge. So you can practice it by being against a wall, putting a meter stick or a dowel along the top of your head all the way to your spine and making sure that your spine is staying stacked as you come over. You wanna feel a slight pull in the back of the legs up in those um, hamstrings. And so that's kind of your cue that you're properly hinging. You don't want to round your back. Right, and if you have point. a partner, yeah, if you have a partner, it's a great way to do it. Stand up for me. Can you imagine someone just grabbing onto your hips, get your mind out of the gutter and pulling back, okay? Keep your chest up. You want to pull back on the hips. So you have that sensation of your hips drawing behind you, okay? Chest stays up. Try not to turtle shell forward. I'm really close to your bum right now. I'm so glad we're comfortable like this. Back it up. <laughs> Another common problem is people, when they come over, so yes, she grabs my hips, pulls them back, and then the top rounds. You want to keep those shoulders drawn back. So I always say the first step is draw the shoulders back and then, then hinge back. Tip. You'll feel the sit, blown, sit bones flare away from each other, okay? And you'll feel the extension through your glutes and through your hamstring. Not pain, just an extension. So they'll be active pull. and a long. A nice pull, yeah. A nice pull. And that's how it's done. One, oh, one. Boom. <laughs> okay. Nice. Woo. I like that. Okay, right. let's come on down. Do we need a new? Oh. Here we go. All right, so today is week two, day three, and we've done cardio, it's yeah? It's going so quickly. It is going yeah. fast. We've done cardio party on Monday. We did a full body strength with yours truly and Sean yesterday. And now Jesse and I are gonna mobilize that body, That's get it. you moving. Okay, so we're gonna keep you all loosey-goosey. And this is your chance to optimize on the mobility. So we're gonna be moving slow, tempos nice and easy. So this is your chance to see how far, when we say mobility, that means how far you can extend without hyperextending that mobility of your limbs and your joints. It's gonna feel good. It's gonna, it's gonna feel, feel good. good. Yeah. 
Let's do okay, it. Okay, key part, probably the most like... It's a really important part. Like, But nobody does it. Nobody. People focus so much on strength and like how much you can lift and they forget to actually um, focus on the range of motion and mobility in a joint. So if you can like deadlift 300 pounds, but you can't do this, <laughs> what yeah. good are you? You need to be able to like take your sweater yes. off, to throw your children up, to get groceries out of the car. We need to be able to move our bodies because as we age, they're gonna get really creaky, like the Tin Man, right? Yes. You're gonna need to oil those joints up. Already, so the more actually. you keep it moving, the more likely you are to keep the mobility in those joints, right? We don't want it to seize up. And even if you are building strength, a lot, if you could have muscle instead of just in this part of your bicep, but all the way from the entry point to the attachment of insertion. insertion part, then you're, you're gonna have more strength. Yeah, it'll make you stronger. It'll so, make you stronger. Long, strong muscles. Long. That's where we're trying to strong. get you. Yeah, we're gonna take it up and take it up a notch. It'll actually boost your strength game. So let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, Start so song. one minute movement. One minute. Timer, please. Timer, please. <laughs> There's my breath work. <laughs> All right, one minute movement. So we're doing the same thing dynamically, which means moving the entire time for one minute, and then we're gonna switch, starting with the neck. So we're gonna tilt, gently let that head roll to the right. Now, a lot of people, bring their head down and then they like push it down into the ground. I want you to think of your earlobe bringing it up towards the ceiling. You'll see if you're listening to this cue, this muscle, everything in here feel nice and lean. Now we're gonna go nice and long, sorry. We're gonna go to the other side. Have a sensation thing. of reaching up through the top of your head and then reaching over. So you feel that full extension through the side of the neck that's extending. And so that's left, also, right. Rotate that chin a little bit to get deeper in that stretch. Are we ready to go to center yet, Jess? Yeah, let's go to center. So back up, and then you're gonna draw your head in. So you'll see a lot of people now are rounding at the top and including that upper spine. So their head's kind of like this. You wanna draw it back by bringing your chin into your chest. Make a double chin. It's not cute. <laughs> Ugly face. Double chin, double chin, double chin. Not ugly face, just different Double face. chin. Whatever. All right, now, opposite of that, I want you to put your hands on your chest and look up at the sky gently. This can hurt for some people. Now, the reason I'm getting you to put your hands on your chest is I don't want you puffing your chest out and drawing your shoulders back. Just gently All opening the way up. up the front line, extending through the chest. Think of shining the heart up towards the ceiling. All right, good. From All the right. top. From the top? Yeah. All right, let's nice go Nice and quick, we'll go quick. All right. Let's roll it this time. So coming here, bringing that chin to the ceiling, roll to the other side. Same thing. And then up. Perfect. Okay. All right, now we're gonna do some rotator cuff mobility. So it's called the full bow. We're gonna come out, hands up, so goal posts here. Elbows up around shoulder height, and then we're just gonna drop the hands. Now, this is the first point. So if you can't come all the way down, we're just gonna come to here. You may have mobility issues coming all the way around, but if you don't, so just do this nice and slow. So you wanna try to be mindful of your core here. So just as we spoke about yesterday, our entire body's active. So think of pulling up on those quads, the front of your thighs, like if you're pulling up pantyhose or soccer socks, your core is nice and tight. The tendency is to pop through the rib cage. Think of drawing the rib cage together, like closing those saloon doors as we pivot through the shoulders. And you also don't want those elbows to drop. So you're not ending here. We wanna keep them nice and high. Why do I feel like I'm break dancing? All right, next one. All right, standing circular lat raise. So we're gonna pretend that we're doing kind of a forward uh, shoulder full circle raise. So bringing hands in front. It's also called, called the salute pose in yoga. There we go. Give a little space here, I'm gonna go on an angle. We can sort of draw a parallel here to taking off the sweater. All right, I'm gonna reach that arm overhead. Or nice big snow angels, <laughs> standing nice and tall, connecting the entire foot with the ground, pushing into each 
mound of each toe, reach tall, and then think of the back of your body activating. Really open up those shoulders, you'll see at the back. Find your breath, inhale, and exhale. And you might think that these are so slow and controlled that you won't feel anything. I guarantee you tomorrow you'll feel your muscles. In a good way. In a good way. All right, next one. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to come down. Oh, chest opener. Okay, so we're going to come with hands behind the head. We're going to lace them, put them behind your head, and it's called prisoner squat normally. But what we're going to do is fan them. So here at the top, we're going to bring them together, fan them open, then come down into a squat and back up. Once you come up, pushing through those heels, we're going to fan again, pushing through the heels. So we're trying to have those elbows come out right to shoulder, right in line with your shoulders. And try not to pull on your neck at all. You want to Putting open up the through the chest. Now Jesse's in a neutral squat position. I'm taking my legs slightly wider into a sumo squat position and where your squat is the deepest will change depending on how you're put together physiologically, right? We're all built a little bit different depending on where your hips sit in the joints. It's true. Speaking of sumo squats, so now we're getting into that nice wide stance. Sumo. We have a 45 degree angle, toes pointing out. We're going to come down in sumo squat. So remember, this doesn't mean knees coming forward. It means still drawing that hip, that um, tailbone back. Down and back. We're gonna lift, come up onto the toes on that right foot, back down, and left side. You wanna make sure that you have a wide enough stance that you're kinda of coming over top of your toes when you lift up. And you will feel these. Woo! If you can't stay down, because this can be difficult, just come to center, come back up, get some glute action in, and then right, left again. Five seconds. Keep Stay those here. heels going like we're wearing five inch heels. <laughs> all right. And all the way up. Right. Shake it out. Woo. All right, we're going to do the lunge facing each other. So we're going to go back with that right leg. We're going to come down into the lunge and we're going to reach over to that opposite side. So the leg that's going back, we're going to reach over to the other side. Now, if you reach too far, you might lose balance. We're trying to open up this line. So just reach, come back up, and then right back into the same leg. Oh, same leg. I messed it up. We're gonna stay on one side. So you're reaching across the forward bent knee, okay? Big exhale. Opening up those fingers. Another way to get balance, if you're having a hard time balancing, take your legs a little bit wider than hip distance apart. If you need to, get a little bit more stability. So widening that base of support can add a little bit more stability. I'm a wiggly wobbly, <laughs> a wiggly wobbly Nelly right, here. Go to the other side. And switch. Switch. So smooth. There we go. It's like looking in a mirror. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Completely opposite. You know. so really reach back that back leg. Nice slow bend. These ankle weights really add on to it, don't they? They do. I hope you guys went and got yours from under the tree as well. Or snuck them from under the tree. Don't tell Frederick. <laughs> Like, who's Frederick? Who's Frederick? <laughs> Frederick is our director. Who's Santa? He's Santa. <gasps> <gasps> All right, this is second. He is Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, oh, reach. Hold that stretch. I know our tempo's picked up a little bit, but really, hold. it's mobility day. So we just want to lengthen those lines. So as long as we All don't right. hold them for anything close to 30 seconds, we're good. All right, okay. now we're going to come down. All the way down on the ground. Squat. So notice my fingertips. Really, since we're in bare feet, we're going to use really extend the feet and the hands. Grip the floor. Bring the knees just below hips, but just still hover. And, and bring the tailbone back. Push through our arms with our head. And come back. back. Now, 
I don't know if your feet are, but my my heels are hitting ah! the ground. My heels aren't quite hitting the ground. Wherever so, you are, do you? That's right. You can always walk too when you're here. Think of reaching the heels all the way down. That really extends you all the way through the back of the body, lighting up that posterior chain. Okay, last five seconds. Keeping a soft bend in the elbows and take it down. What do we got next, Jess? Next. Let's see what we have next. Let's see what we have next. We have cat cows. We're gonna actually we have frog squat. We're gonna frog stretch. So why does this feel obscene? How does it feel obscene? Because we make anything <laughs> Okay, so hands out in front actually. So we're gonna bring the knees as far wide as you possibly can, no pressure. And then you want your feet to actually come even further than your knees. So you're gonna push the tailbone back. So you're gonna feel a nice deep stretch. And forward. In that pelvis area, and then forward. The inside, ar your inside arches of your feet are touching the ground. And if it's too intense for you, just come on out of it for a microsecond and come back. Okay. And also drop down into Four your seconds. forearms, push back, little pulse, and breathe. Last one. And collapse. <laughs> okay, all right, staying here. Just moving into, into four, uh, all fours. Again, wrist directly under shoulders and then knees under hips. Set the shoulders. Cat cow, which you may all be familiar with. We're gonna round out the back, tuck the pelvis under, depressing the shoulders. Why do we call this a cat cow? It's like a scared cat on Halloween, right? You know how cats arch their backs up? And then opposite, you're gonna drop the tailbone. Let your and otters hang down. <laughs> Let what? Those, a cow, otters hang oh, down. Right, right, right. <laughs> Inhale, round your back, be a scared cat. Now be a cow, otters hang down. Inhale. Using udders. 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 What are they called? Udders? Yeah. Otters? Udders? Udders? Oh my God, how much time we have left? <laughs> Enough time for me to say udders one more time? Really round it out. You should feel it in your shoulder blades, feel it in your pelvis. Yeah, the scapula, the scapula moves away from each other on the top of this movement. And then... Last one. Beautiful. All right, nice. Okay, we're gonna stay in that position actually. We're gonna stretch the forearm, which you'll see if you're doing this with us, a lot of people do not do. So you'll be like, oh, right here. Like when you turn like this, it you'll hurts. feel it, yeah. Okay. okay, and then if you can, if you have the mobility, you're gonna lean slightly back. So you should feel a stretch in here in your forearms and in your wrist. You're gonna lean back, come back to center, flip it around, and then we're gonna go up, if you can, to your knuckles. That's called a knuckle push-up. Reverse it. Peel, peel, peel the palm away from the ground. And then come back, flip it. Flip it good. Come on up. So we do all this strength training with weights, bands, where we have this crazy grip on it and then we never stretch our grip strength. I need to get my nails done. <laughs> Jeez. COVID's <laughs> <laughs> really messing up my last my one game here. Woo! Oh, that feels so great. You feel it all the way up the forearm. Just a nice release. Totally. I love it. I love all right. It. Now we're going to kick that leg back again, bringing that left one for me underneath the foot, the ankle Spot underneath. The side. All right. Underneath. And then we're going to drop actually down to that side where the leg is pulled back. We're going to drop down to that hip. So you should feel a stretch through this line here. You should feel those kind of muscles attached to the hip pulling away a bit, a nice stretch. We're gonna reach out front with that hand up to the top and then to the back. Now we're gonna come back to neutral, switch sides. So back in that wide mountain climber, climber position. Drop, drop the hip, reach forward, then up. And then to the back. To the back, I feel the most stretch. I don't know I about you. Love, yeah. Switch. I could literally stay in that forever. Let's get one more in. So that's a good point. We're doing dynamic here. That means moving. But you guys can always hold these after a workout for 30 seconds. That's a static stretch after a workout. 
Before a workout, like dynamic stretching, that means moving and mobilizing. You don't ever want to hold something for more than 30 seconds before a workout, because then a static hold temporarily weakens the muscles, and if you're doing that before a strength day, it's not a good idea, because those muscles will be temporarily weakened. We're done totally. with these guys. I know, they are my favorite. So like, you guys do extra time with those, because we really didn't get that far. All right, now, legs out as far as you can, feet out to side. We're gonna do a stretch to that right side. So reaching over, then we're gonna come into the middle. Your mobility might vary from person to person here. Or from side to side. From side to side, yeah, depending on your habits. Some of us tend to sink into one hip. I know when I'm doing the dishes, I sink into one hip. Totally. Right? Or, or like, um, or if you have little ones, I would always hike them up on one hip. So one hip would sit higher than the other. This is the most common thing. If you cross your legs, male or female, if you cross your legs and you sit in that position for an extended period of time, guess what? That hip crease is going to be hiked on that one side. Totally. So these... You're essentially shortening the muscles on one side and then lengthening them on the other. Being aware of these deficiencies or short, not shortcomings, but these hindrances to movement. Improper movement, yeah. Yeah, improper movement can help you know where you need to work on your mobility a little bit. One more center. Woo. All right. Now, we're going to get some ab work in, some core work. So we're going to go head to head here. Walking through the wilderness. All right. Okay. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's always theater. Jump in. Jump in. All right. So legs up nice and straight. Our ankle weights are going to come into play here. You can have your hands out to the side. I'm sure we've done this with you guys already in this program. We're dropping one leg down nice and slowly. And then the other side. Okay, no rush with this one. Make sure we keep those shoulder blades fully connected to the ground. The tendency here is for the shoulders to roll up towards the sky. Don't let that happen, okay? Think of connecting from shoulder blade to shoulder blade. And then pull your belly button down towards the ground. Eight seconds left, stay with us. Remember Eight. drawing that belly button into spine, making sure the back is an arch, you can't fit your hand under. Oh, okay. Oh. All right, I see you. Do you right. weights? I see you. <laughs> I see you. I see you, I see how you're doing. Hopping <laughs> head to head. Jazz him. All right, 90 degrees in the leg. We're going to drop side to side now. Do some oblique work, so hands out to side if you choose. If not, and you're like, all star, you can come up to the top, but as you can see, that's hard, especially with ankle weights on. I would prefer to engage proper muscle and just drop gently to the ground, then up to center. I really enjoy back this one. I feel lots of correction happening through the lower lumbar. If you have back issues, though, like you know for a fact you have lower lumbar issues or any um, SI joint issues, we're going to skip this one altogether. Totally. You can keep with the leg lifts. Okay, so nice big rotation through I the love. lumbar, all the cracks and corrections. Sometimes it just helps to reset your pelvis by taking it across the body. Last one. <sighs> oh, could do all I that. I love it. Do that all day. All right, we're going to come into tabletop. So we're going to start with the hands facing, 40, I say 45 degrees, right? Yeah. yeah. Your Make sure your shoulder's nice and comfortable. Shoulder. All right. Now you're going to drop that butt to the ground. And when you come up, the knees should be over the ankles. And we're head to head. And we're head to head. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. So you want to make sure that this is glute activation. So you're not pushing up through the top and like, you know, trying to get your body as far to the top as you can. You're actually activating the glute muscles and trying to stop the movement. So squeezing the bum. Yeah, lots of good action. Squeeze the bum. 10 seconds. Actively pushing through the palm. Don't let your heart sink down. The tendency here is for the shoulders to come up when your heart really sinks down. Actively push your heart up. Push your heart down. Keep your chest proud and wide. Tap your bum down and the lift. We're really close. All right, that's it for that. Again, do as much or as little of these as you'd like to. Now, we're rolling down to side. Head to head again. I'll put my arm in the back. You put yours on the front. There we go. Okay, so we're going to work on that glute knee. So that's the side of your glute, and it really helps with stabilization and balance. Again, we're going to lift 
up as high as you can, leading with the heel and slowly down. And we talked about neutral pelvis in our last mobility day. We want to make sure that we still have a nice long line in the spine. Try not to sink through the rib cage and let that lower rib hang on the ground. We almost have a space between the lower rib and your limb where you can fit your hand because your spine is nice and long, right? Those natural curves or a sense of space. Those natural curves peel away from your mat. We exhale as you lift. All right, three seconds, and we're gonna stay here, but watch. We're gonna drive knee to the front. So bring it up as far as you can in front of you at that 45 degree angle, and then we're gonna kick it back in that same line. Now you're not gonna kick it back and let it kind of come down here. You're gonna kick it back and as high as you can. With control. Ooh, with control. Your top hand can come down in front of you for a little bit of support. Tap the knee down. And exhale. your head up. I feel like I want to do this. I like to keep my head down, put my ear to my bicep like a pillow. Helps keep that neck in neutral. All 20 seconds. Down. I'm already feeling it. Like I was, this. Feeling, I was feeling it 10 seconds ago. All right. Just saying. Now you're going to want your, your legs going to want to drop. Keep it going. Keep that same angle, that starting angle you had. Four Front. All the way back. Last three, three seconds. seconds. Last one, and top of the front. All right, we're gonna do the exact same thing by the other side. So starting with the abduction, just the leg coming up and down. Hi, I miss you. Hi, I miss you already. All right, how are we? Are we, in, are we good here? Good. All right. So remember, slow tempo allows you to see how, what that range is that you can move. So if you feel like you're naturally going quickly, just go to here, try and push at that extra five or 10% before pain. So, so the we'll, ankle weights add a lot of resistance. Totally. So as you're lowering your feet, try to fight against it. Your weights can pull your feet down, resist against it, resist against it, resist against it. So we're working in both directions, the adductors and adductors, inner and out of the thigh, okay? So those are the muscles that are responsible for pulling your leg away from your body and subsequently pulling it back towards the body. So All right. really resist now, and switch on. Coming up. Reach your toes. Kicking back. Hiya. Well, you can actually see, I don't know, you probably can't see, but if you had someone behind you, you can see, like I feel like with this exercise, you can fully see the glute activation happening. Oh, yeah. Because you're going back and at an angle, you can see that glute med, like you should be able to see it. And if you're oh, sorry. you should feel this. Glute max. Right here. Yeah, bone, dead right? center. That big, broad muscle across the back of your bum, that's where we're feeling it. Sometimes if you're having a problem, a hard time activating the power of touch, you can just take that hand to the muscle, light touch, it tells your body that's where it should be feeling it. It helps turn it on. Turn it on. Light Keep it. that knee coming at that strong angle in the front. Don't Two. get weak on this. Last one. Last one. Woo. And down. Oh, hello. I know, right? And the leg kneeling. Okay, so now we're going to come up onto our mats on our knees. If we do opposites, then we can stay closer. I want to keep so here we, all right, let's do it. So you're going to kick out to your left. I'm going to kick out to my right and we're going to come down. So this is called a kneeling squat. So it's a good starting position. If you're a little bit unstable and you want to load, like say a barbell or something, as long as you have your hinge down, remember that. So that means tipping at the hip. Chest you can load. Yeah. yeah. You can load that barbell onto your back or just a vest and come down into that kind of beginner squat. Squeeze your glutes at the top. Now the back leg, you can have your toes flat on the top, the top of your feet flat on the ground, or you can tuck your toes under. Whatever feels better for your body here, whatever feels like it's facilitating more movement and not limiting your mobility. Last one. Squeeze. All right, we're gonna kick it to the other side. Hi. Hi. See you soon. All right. Punch your toes. Okay, so on another important point is make sure the knee is directly under your hip. You don't want it going too in or too out. And then coming back straight. I don't want to be coming into the middle. I want to be coming and falling right above that heel. Squeeze the to the top. Mm. 
We're almost done, guys. We have one more after this. Right, left, this went by so fast. Right? Yeah, this is like the perfect thing to do. I do my mobility at night, I don't know about you. But like in front of the TV when I'm totally That's like every time. Netflix and chilling. Bed, yeah. We'll put the mat out, put on a nice episode. Right now I'm watching Queens of the South. Have you seen this? Oh no. Queen Queen of the South. Queen of the South. I just watched um, the Queen's Gambit. So good. So good. So good. It's so good. I'm like, um, her mom just died. Sorry, spoiler alert. Yeah, hello. Spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> Anyways, that's where I am. So not You know what? Down. Maybe we should do this one facing forward just so we're all in frame. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is called thread the needle, but we're gonna make it dynamic. Usually it's kind of a stretch. And it, we're gonna thread the needle by lifting that right arm up, so fully stable, wrist underneath the shoulder here, weaving it through the body and that arm, and then dropping gently onto the shoulder and rolling up onto the head. It's okay to come up onto the head, you'll feel a nice stretch there. We're holding it for too long, but then we're gonna come up. Nice big rotation through the spine as we reach that hand up towards the ceiling. Back to neutral, and we're gonna do the other side. So thread the needle, bring your ear down to the ground, bring your shoulder down to the ground. Come back up and open up, open up that heart. Nice, it feels so delicious. It's so good. It's so delicious. I'm delicious. <laughs> so this is a stretch. So again, you can turn that into a static hold after a workout. We're just making it dynamic right now. So we're working on mobility. I feel so loosey goosey. That's the idea. All right, how many more seconds? Just one more each side. If you treat it dynamically, just make sure you get in the full range of motion, meaning you come right down on your shoulder, roll to your head, hold for one, and come back up. Last stretch. Good job, girl. Well Woo! done. Good work, guys. Okay, we can't stress how important mobility is to your fitness. Like we said at the beginning of this, we can be really strong, but if we have no mobility, there's not really much place you can, there's not, you can't go very far with it. It's really injury, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, you're waiting for an injury to happen. Have you ever heard of someone saying they sneeze and threw out their back? I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, well, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm a skater or I'm a skier. And I say, well, was that where you hurt your back? No, I was picking up groceries or picking yeah. up my daughter Always. or sneezed. So Because what? there's that something hiding in your body that you haven't been paying attention to. Mm -hmm. And it's just like sitting there waiting for you to do that like one wrong second thing. And then boom, right. you're out for like a month. F-bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Total F-bomb. And it's winter, so like slippery ice. You right. need to keep that stuff all mobile and loosey exactly. goosey like while your you're core, getting strength. Your core is what kicks in when you're about to slip on the ice. It's what saves you from falling. So you want to make sure that your core is in check, that we're mobile and we're not tight, and that even when we're doing our strength training, we're able to move through full range of motion and in more than one plane. Okay, so if you lack the flexibility and mobility to do so, we tend to sort of stay in one place and you get nice big muscles, but they're not long and lean and they can't really work for you. Yeah, pay, yeah pay attention to the workouts that you're doing, whether it's us or um, somebody else, something you're finding on the internet or something you're making up. Make sure you're moving front ways to back ways to sideways and rotating. Your workouts should include, include all of that range of motion. Okay. Super, super important because you don't always fall just to the side or just to the front. You have to be able to like fast twitch <laughs> and which way. We're not 2D. We're not 2D. Should we put these back under the tree for Frederick Hens? I really don't want to, but yeah. don't tell them. Okay. See you guys tomorrow. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, guys.